And so the whole history of our human life on this planet, beginning from the individual level, conflict, expanding to family and people and nation and blocks of nations, as we see in the great world wars of the 20th century. So the question then, what is the root of the contradiction? If the, if, the, if the core of the problem is not racial, if the core of the problem is not class, if the core of the problem is not political, then let's not waste our time looking there. Let's look at the core of the problem, the contradiction within the individual. This is the business of religion, actually, to resolve that contradiction, is it not? Anthropologist Richard Heinberg in his book Memories and Visions of Paradise said people in every culture and age have insisted that evil had a specific cause, that the contradiction began at a specific point, in other words, that human nature is not natural at all because it has been distorted by some fundamental mistake or failure that has been perpetuated from generation to generation. Heinberg studied the myths of creation and separation and alienation. In every culture, there is a mythical story about human origins that consistently involves humanity separating from its original purpose, falling short of what was expected, acting contradictory to a divine command. This is a consistent image in all of the world's cultures. The, these ancient stories, you may, see, you may recognize Prometheus there, these are not scientific history. I don't expect that an anthropologist is going to dig up the bones of Adam and Eve and find the artifacts of the Garden of Eden. These are not scientific history, but they represent intuitive understanding of the human condition. They reveal wisdom that's applicable to our current lives and helps us understand history and the struggle between good and evil. Here's an example of a West African story. The divine, the creator, gives a job to the sun, the moon, and to man. The sun does his job and is rewarded with a place to rule the sky during the day. The moon does his or her job and is rewarded with the place to rule the sky at night. Man is to take a bunch of bananas, ripen them, and carry them to the top of the mountain and offer them to the Creator without eating one. But of course, along the way, his hunger gets the better of him. And what does he do? He eats the banana and is cast into a pit. In, in Buddhist culture, a story of originally spiritual beings who became attracted and drawn to the physical and material, sense-oriented pleasures, and it dragged us down into this false reality. There are many versions, but their fundamental points are the same. Carl Jung, Swedish psychologist, studied the myths and the symbols expressed in our dreams and in the religious culture. Jung concluded that every culture has a myth of an original fall or alienation. This in his famous work, Man and His Symbols. Further, he recognized that the symbols, snakes and trees and fruits and uh, women being told not to do something until a certain time and, and uh, struggles between man and woman, that there are certain symbols that are common to these myths. And they also recur in dreams of human beings all over the face of the earth, what Jung called the collective unconscious, that we all have a level of consciousness that we share. Even though we may not have communicated, deep inside us we have the same original mind and sense and conscience. And Jung, interestingly, found in each of these stories some sense of guilt about love about sexuality on each level. Here's the famous story of Pandora. Pandora was betrothed to a son of the God and was, told, was given a gift and told, don't open it until when? 
until after your wedding night. Now, gee, that's a tough one to figure out. What is it that a woman is not supposed to open until after her wedding night? Duh. I wonder what it represents. See, these themes are common. By the way, Pandora can't keep control of her desire. She opens the box prior to her wedding, and evil enters the world. The religions of the book, coming from the Genesis story, also have an intricate and interesting myth that is filled with symbolism. Fruits and serpents and trees and maturing and don't eat and that you can eat, you can eat. I'm not going to go into detail, but simply the simple fact that before eating the fruit, they were naked and they were not what? They were not ashamed. There was nothing shameful about their nose or their chin or their belly button or their knees. But after eating the fruit, they did become ashamed. But not of their mouths which had eaten, not of their hands which had stolen. They covered their lower parts. They felt shame about their sexuality. And in this story, we see more than just the fall or, or separation of individuals. We see the breakdown of a family. You understand that the Genesis story presents history's first dysfunctional family. So what truths do these stories teach? What common lessons can we learn from them? Number one, human beings have freedom and choice. In each of these stories, the result is not predetermined by an almighty God who's determining uh, uh, the, the play on the human stage. In each of these stories, human beings have a responsibility, a choice. With freedom comes responsibility. In each of these stories, we are told that human beings aren't just free, laissez-faire, to live as we want on earth. That there are laws and principles. There is a divine order and we are accountable to a higher authority. Wherever you locate that authority, in the laws of the universe, in the divine potential within the individual, or in an almighty transcendent God as I do, human beings are free, but with freedom comes responsibility, and we are accountable to a higher authority which we can see expressed in the unchanging, eternal laws of the natural world. Also, these stories teach us that failed responsibility is the origin of evil and conflict, and that human potential remains unfulfilled, still incomplete. If we look at the religions of the book, which have touched some 60% of human beings living on earth. Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. There are many symbols within the scriptures, the meaning of eating a fruit, etc., which will support the points I'm making. The religions of the book describe not just the fall, the disobedience of individuals, but the breakdown of the first family. The separation of man from God the exaltation of self, not God-centered, but my will first. From that came the separation of man from woman, mistrust between the first ancestors, and the separation of parents from children, and ultimately the elder brother, out of resentment and jealousy, killed his younger brother. The Genesis story describes history's first dysfunctional family. Now, I mentioned that all of these cultural myths contain wisdom about the human condition. If America, my country, would understand the implication here of how the disorder and the infidelity between the parents led to the confusion and anger and alienation of the children, we would see the story of the last 40 years in America. How through the movement of free love, of divorce, of a me-centered society, the breakdown of family and marriage, the rise of single parent families, the, 
the decline of traditional stable homes with children being raised by their father and mother has led to an alienated generation of young people. Violence like at Columbine in Colorado. It's not only in the urban community, it's all over American society. Anger, resentment, and violence. A confused and disoriented generation because of the breakdown of stable families. This is the lesson of the Genesis story, is it not? 